I mean, before we even go to things we watched, I think the big news is is that the finished Batgirl movie was canceled by the new leadership at Warner Brothers. It was supposed to go directly to HBO Max. It is not going there now. It's not going anywhere now. Not only that, they also canceled the sequel to Scoob. <laughs> oh no! Which I think Shipwreck was probably why. Was pro- <laughs> why would you cancel that? That's like an instant money maker. Apparently not. Dis- the uh, Warner Brothers HBO DC Comics is now owned by Discovery. You know, sure. Like the dis- you know the the owners of the Food Network yes. and HGTV. Yes, and they've made a lot of money with stuff with like you know Property Ivory, Brothers, Property Brothers, Uh-oh. Chip and Joanna Gaines. Are they going to be in multiverses? I I mean it's possible, but a Guy Fieri in multiverses would actually make sense. Um, <laughs> but I think they're used to the lowest cost possible for program with the highest return possible. So when they see, well, Batgirl costs $90 million to make, and we're going to put it on HBO Max, which the return is the potential for new subscriptions or people just not canceling their subscriptions, they're like, well, that's not worth $90 million to us. We want more than that. That's not our business model anymore. They canceled all original programming on HBO Max. There's a tax break for this, right? Is that that's the reason, right? Because if I they if they never yeah, release not, it, then they can write off like the ninety million like right away. And there's of, yeah, and they're not spending the marketing budget, which apparently was close to fifty million or something like that, on top of the ninety. So there are reasons why it's still very unusual when this is done to a film that's been finished. Must be bad. But wow, they put Scoob out a lot did of bad really stuff. bad as well. Oh, but it, Scoop came out during the. I gotta re. Scoob came out during the pandemic. Yeah, that was like the one of the um, first movies to come out. Because kids' movies, I mean, they make a lot of money. They every kids' movie comes out like the parents are taking them to see it because that's the thing. So well, this I think was going to be straight to HBO Max also. Well, that doesn't make sense. Put it in a theater. It was like a Christmas Scoob a Scoob Christmas or something. Oh. This sounds this sounds worse and worse as you go through this. What I didn't write it or make it. I'm just expecting like I'm expecting to turn on HBO Max and it's gonna be like, I don't know, Guy Fieri's Euphoria and <laughs> that's gonna be it. And it's just gonna be like him in a grocery store going, High school kids are gonna make three dishes in three hours. That's not what happens in Euphoria. It's not high school kids cooking meals? No. Or digging <laughs> ditches. That would be boners, uh, though. A lot of boners. A lot of boners. Okay, so they we dig have ditches and Guy naked Fieri. High school, huh? Guy Fieri digs ditches. Yeah, dive, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's mm-hmm. one of his shows, like ditches, diners, and so. <laughs> did ditches, so diners does this and concern ditches? you a lot, Wombat? Like, because this is you're the big DC guy. It is. It's very interesting, and it's very. Uh, I. Mm, it's hard to say what's going to happen to a lot of these things. I, I think we're going to get another The Batman because that movie made a lot of money. So I think it'd be foolish not to make another one. And Aquaman maybe they should two, make a few less toys though, because those toys are all on clear. Yeah, those those well, <laughs> that movie. How do you make toys against that movie? It's not it's not a kids movie. It's not cartoony enough. The other Batman toys were fine. Just stick with that. Right. But don't make anyway. toys for rated R movies. Like, yeah. don't make it and put them in Target. You can make them yeah. and sell them on Big Bad Toy Store or whatever, but on a and Target. And they never made a Riddler, which really, that was the problem also. Those Buzz um, Lightyear toys are all on clearance, too. That didn't, I know. That didn't take long. Mm-mm. That movie's on Disney Plus today. Um, yeah. That, I, that, they just... I fully believe that the Lightyear situation is that they screwed up the marketing for that movie because... Nobody understood what in the world it was to begin with. I haven't it's seen a, that movie weird, yet. It's a weird but sell, but it is, it is a weird sell. It should I'll not have been a weird sell though. It should have been a really easy slam dunk sell of here's a new Buzz Lightyear movie. Like that, that seems like a pretty easy thing to be successful with. Before he was a toy, he was a man who was made into a toy. And you know the toy, but now here's the man who's not a toy. 
Lightyear. That's the, that's what they should have said. That that yeah, that would explain it all much. I think much I think better. that I think that did explain it all. But it's going to be very interesting. I would be I'm gonna. It's going to be interesting to see if there are any lawsuits regarding Batgirl because I could see that happening. If there are any deals made with the director as far as you know, guaranteeing release, guaranteeing some sort of bonus if it's well received. These are all things that really that happen. But to shelve it and not give the chance. Or maybe they already paid everybody off and were like, sorry, here's your salary. Here's what you could have made. So this is all for like tax write-offs or something? Yeah. It's so confusing because it's like, it doesn't make sense in a normal like world that you already finished this and you have a service where people would watch it and pay for the service to watch it. Cash grab. Mm -hmm. Cash grab. Discovery is a profitable company. I'm... They want to make more profit, and this is how they do it. It's not about. I was gonna say, it's not about entertaining us. I guess it's it's an odd thing to take things that were going to be on your service and remove them. I know it's going to be interesting when they merge Discovery Plus and HBO Max, if they go to see which model they go with. Because I don't think people want commercials on their HBO Max. They don't. I can tell you that's that right now, good, as a person. Yeah, well, yes, I, obviously that was a uh, hypothetical statement. <laughs> as a person with HBO Max, I can tell you 100. percent I do not want no any commercials. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you watching? Yeah. I Jerks. watched my wife and I watched the Shania Twain documentary on Netflix. It's <laughs> new. It's a new documentary about Shania Twain. Nice. It was all right. I didn't know that she had stopped singing for almost 20 years because she had Lyme disease that ruined her voice. That's not good. No. Did you know that? No. Did you know that that her that she's the number one selling female artist of all time or something crazy? You know what else I didn't know about Shania Twain? What? Anything. She has three diamond selling records in a row, which is something no artist, other artist has ever done, male or female. Well, nobody sells records anymore. Well, that so was in the 90s. Right. Yes. I'm just saying. Yeah. She yeah. did it at she the right time. Three of the best selling. She sold over 100 million records. It's a lot. Big crop. Yeah. She's got a lot of money. Good. Yeah. She can make a movie. It, yeah. It's herself. a bit of a sunny documentary. It, it you know, it doesn't. They talk about Where how. Were you looking for a hard hitting Shania Twain expo? You know what it is? It's like there are certain. Did they interview clues. the tick that gave her Lyme disease? No, it's more like they talk about when she was 22, her parents died Rough. And, in a car accident. And she had younger siblings. And you said this is a feel-good story. She had, oh, Let me get there. She had younger siblings, and she had to stop pursuing music to help raise her younger siblings for however, however long. And then eventually, of course, she becomes big and famous. But she basically raised her siblings like her kids. And this is a documentary where they're literally interviewing everyone that's ever spoken to her, except they never interview her siblings. She Which played at the, uh, the water weird. park I worked at in, in, in high school. How she had, so? She had, a, she had a concert there. Oh, nice. <laughs> they pulled up a big semi-trailer. It had a big Shania train, Twain picture on the side <laughs> of it. That was been in the early 90s, like first record. I would I would assume so, because I don't think she was on the water park circuit for very long. No, I was going to say, because she was filling out stadiums pretty quickly. Right. But, I think uh, they, they got her hooked in pretty, pretty early. She nice. was uh, in between the uh, when they when they did the jet ski shows out on the <laughs> waves. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, don't know, I think it's always interesting when they have these documentaries about musicians or whatnot and they talk about their families, but those family members, you know, not children, obviously, but like adults, they're never on. They never interview them. They never ask them questions. They gloss over it very quickly. And to me, that's kind of suspect because there are certain documentaries like a good example. You know, do you ever watch the Super Dave Osborne documentary on HBO Max? You know who Super Dave is, right? GB? Yes. <laughs> yes, this Bob Einstein. He was also on yes. Curb, but yes. he passed away. And before he passed away, they actually finished the documentary about him. And not only is he on it, his ex, his last wife, 
his ex-wife, his daughter, and his grandchildren, and his brother, who is Albert Brooks, but they're all in the documentary saying how, you know, good a father, he was a good husband, all those things that... Where is this going? People, I'm so confused at where we're... Where we're Are we still being, talking about the Shania Twain documentary? Yes. Basically, oh, okay. I'm saying that you is can learn canceled? a lot by, from a documentary by who they don't speak to and what they're really like as a person. They should have pulled Are this you, one off the service. Are you anti Shania Twain? Is that I'm not anti Shania Twain. I'm saying that her siblings must hate her. I am now. I That's wasn't all. before. Never mind. You're not listening. I'm sure that I people, was listening. I was. I you said this was a, like a feel good story, and then the main takeaway was that I'm everybody saying hates her. Her, off, her off screen siblings hate her. Well, it's a feel good story. In the and her sense parents that it's, died it's, at a young age. Sorry. It's well. It's Lyme crafted. Disease. It's crafted to make her look at her best throughout the whole thing. I but I think it. the subtext there is because it was made by like her record label. It wasn't made by like a documentary crew. Anyway, I've spoken too much about it already. Never mind. What else? <sighs> I did watch light and magic. Did you watch any of that on Disney plus? Nope. That's the new documentary series about the formation and history of industrial light and magic. I figured. Yes, the uh, the FX studio behind Star Wars and a lot of other cool stuff. Name another one. Uh, other than Star Wars? Mm-hmm. Raiders of the Lost Ark? Name Jurassic four. Park? Can't uh, name four. No way. Uh, no way. Sh- young Sherlock Home Adventures? What? I didn't hear that. Goonies? All right. Was it entertaining? It's very entertaining. I highly recommend it. There's some really cool stuff in there. Um, I would say a little tidbits. Did you know that Pixar started at ILM? That's not so shocking. I think a lot of people know that, but did you know that? And did you know that Photoshop was created at ILM? I did not know that. Wasn't Pixar with 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 Apple as well, though? uh, George Lucas sold Pixar to Steve Jobs. Got it. All right. Yeah, because the Pixar team didn't want to work on special effects for other movies anymore. They wanted to make their own movies. And George Lucas was like, but I don't need people making their own movies here. I need people making special effects. So he was like, how about I just sell you to someone that's going to let you make movies? And everybody wins. Sounds good. Yeah. Ratatouille. Yeah. George (laughs) Lucas is good at business, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. He has a spaceship. George Lucas, good at business. This is his own spaceship. He thinks the planet's going to be destroyed and he's going to leave on a spaceship. Yeah. It's a, uh, also, he seems a little weird. Yeah. That does not surprise me. I watched uh, this special on Netflix, The Most Hated Man on the Internet. Just How came was out. that? It's good. It's only, it's a short one. It's only, I think, three episodes. So it's not one of these that's wasting your time for hours and hours. Uh, it's about the, the, a guy who ran a major revenge porn website. And, you know, the drama comes from really not knowing what happened in real life. So I'm not going to tell you. But (laughs) if you want to see like an asshole (laughs) do some shit on the Internet, then you should watch this movie. Does he get his comeuppance? Um, But again, I don't want to ruin it because it is only three episodes. And if you want to find out what happened, you could just Google it. Um, But it's called Most Hated Man on the Internet. And it's done well. And it's certainly entertaining for its three episodes. We watched nothing but documentaries in the last week, huh? We're all documentaries all the time. Ship, did you watch anything that wasn't a documentary? I, I watched. I watched a movie based on a true story. What you watched? Schindler's I, List. Yeah, set the kids down. <laughs> watch Schindler's List. Uh, we watched. Uh, we bought a zoo. I've seen it before, but that's oh, what okay. we watched. They bought a zoo. Whoa! Uh, nice. Spoil they did it. it. They did it. Right. You guys seen that movie? No, I haven't. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. How about that? They they buy a zoo in it, and then there's plot arcs that go along with it. Matt Damon's there. Matt Damon. Um, <laughs> he must hate that movie so much. He's Scarlett probably jo- care. Johansson was, it was there does. as well. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's an odd movie in that it has a whole bunch of like huge movie stars in it, but it's it's a kind of just a kind of a Somewhat kids movie. It's a lot of dead dead wife. 
vibe going on in the no thanks yeah uh so you're saying it's a feel-good movie <laughs> it, it is a feel-good movie they bought a zoo because his wife died mm-hmm. and he was out of a midlife crisis i understand right you should buy a table tennis club you can also clean up your excrement 